concept getters how are you i hope everything is okay happy 2025 i'm back and officially i'm welcoming you back as well so let's go straight to this question right they say in triangle a b c below e lies on b c let's look at e e is right here right it's here they say it lies on b c okay we see it and they say such that 2CE equals to EB. So there's a relationship between EC and EB. We're going to explore it, right? And they say F lies on AC. We can see it here, right? And then they say such that CF is to CA. Okay, CF is this one. Is to CA, the whole thing, is equal to what? 3 is to 8. Oh, we see the ratio. We're going to write it, right? And they say DE is also drawn parallel to BF. So we can see DE is here, is parallel to BF. Okay, we see, we see. And then the question says, calculate the value of EG over EA. EG is this one over EA is the whole thing here. So we see, oh, okay, we see, we see. So now we're going to use three steps, right? The first step always when you solve this type of question is you're going to start by finding ratios on everything using variables for each ratio, right? So we're going to simplify everything that is written in the, form, uh, in the information, right? And then step number two is you find the PLTs, which are the parallel lined triangles. I'll show you what those are, right? Don't worry, I got you. And then the last thing is you're going to relate all the ratios with the PLTs while minding the questions at large or the question at large. So let's start with the first step. The first step, we have this part here. As you can see it and we also have this so we're going to simplify them and then find the ratios on this diagram so let's do that so we're going to say they wrote the first thing i'm going to write on the side is they wrote 2 ce right they say it's equal to eb every time when i see a number and it's only one number on the whole equation i will say i will assume the coefficient of the other part is one because the coefficient of one is mostly not written so you just write it right and then what i'm going to do is just always i want the variables or the sides that are known to be on one side like i want them on this side and this side i want a fraction or numbers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to swap i'm going to say this variable has to go down here under ce and this two has to go down here under one so you'll see what we're going to have is going to it's going to be what it's going to be we're going to have ce over eb now eb will go down just under ce and then you're gonna say you are left with one over then the two will go this side and it's gonna be two so it's going this side makes sense so i wrote it as a fraction now it's perfect that's my first step right so after finding this i'm gonna say always i give it a variable so i'm gonna say this x this one is gonna get x and this two is also gonna get x so i'm going straight to the diagram where i see ce i write one x where I see EB, I'm going to write 2X. Clear? So that's my next step, my, my final step, basically. I'm going to say CE is here. I'm going to write 1X. And then EB is this part here. So I'm going to write what? 2X. Clear? So we write it in X. If I find another ratio somewhere in the information... The variable that I'm going to use this time around is not going to be X, but it's going to be Y or P, whatever uh, alphabet that you want. Clear. So let's see now. I'm going to go to the second one. Second one is this one. As I, as I was reading, I saw that there was CF is 2. So here's what you need to know, concept getters. If they say 1 is to 2 or 2 over, I mean not 2, right? Or 1 over 2 or 1 divided by 2, or 1 per 2, all these things mean the same thing. They mean the same thing, right? They mean the same thing. 1 is to 2, 1 over 2, 1 divided by 2, 1 per 2, a ratio, a fraction, a quotient, or just a pair. We just can, we can call it a pair, right? They are the same thing. So even here, they wrote, they gave us the is to. So if they give us the is to, I will want it as a fraction so that everything can make sense. Clear? So I'm just going to rewrite it. I'm going to write what? I'm going to say CF over CA is equal to 3 over 8. And then I'm going to give them the variables now. 
Remember at the top we used X. Now I'm just going to use what? Y. So I'm going to say Y, Y. Then I go to the diagram, right? And on the diagram, I'm going to put 3Y on CF. So let's see our CF. Our CF is this one here, right? So I'm just going to say here we have our 3Y, right? And then on CA, we have 8Y. So on CA, CA is the whole thing, all right? It's the whole thing, CA, the whole CA, clear? So I'm going to give it what? I'm going to give it 8Y, clear? That's what we have, right? So now that I have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, this is the first step, right? Remember the second step I said we're going to find the PLTs. What are the PLTs, Mr. Say? Okay, let me explain it to the concept getters. PLT stand for parallel lined triangles. Parallel line triangles are triangles that have a line inside that is going to be parallel to the third side of a triangle. So basically, it leads us to the first theorem in grade 12. Right? So I want the triangles in the diagram. I just want to highlight the triangles that have parallel lines. A parallel line as one side and a parallel line inside the triangle. So let's see now. I'm going to say, when I look, because basically always I start with the parallel line. I look at this line here. It's parallel. I'm going to move towards another line that is parallel to it on either side of the ending, on this side and on this side. I'm going to move this direction, passing that line, right? So I'm going to say if I move past it and move here, I'm going to have DEA as a parallel lined triangle. Why? Because DE is parallel to FG. So I have that triangle. So I'm going to write it as one of my parallel lined triangle. So I'm going to write it as one of them. I'm going to say the first one is... D E A. Right? Then let's see if there's a second one. I go to the second parallel line, which is F B here. So I check if I move towards this parallel line, where am I gonna end? I'm gonna end at C. So I'm gonna have a parallel line triangle because D E is parallel to F B in triangle C B F. So C B F is my parallel line triangle. So I'm gonna write it. I'm gonna say C B F. Is also my parallel lined triangle. Those are my PLTs. Always find the PLTs in your diagram in order to know where to move from where and to where. Once you find the parallel line triangles, the PLTs, you go to those ratios that you have, you relate it with the question. You look at the ratio of the question. What are they looking for? And I move reverse in reverse mode. Like, boom, you know, you put your gear on R, reverse, right? And not R, R, hey, I'm joking, I'm joking, R, right? So I'm going to go to EG. EG is this one, and then EA is this one, the whole thing. So I'm going to move from this, use, checking if this line is in one of my PLTs. So I see, oh, AED is actually in triangle DEA, which is this triangle. So which means... EG over AE or EA can relate with DF over DA. So, oh, but in DF, I can have something, right? DF can also be in part of that other parallel line triangle with this, which is CDF BEC, this one, right? So, which means I have to move from one parallel line triangle to another parallel line triangle, and I'm going to end up using CE and B. But when you write down, you go in reverse again. You start with your C, E, B, right? With that other parallel. You, you start with this one. You start here. You move them to here. Then after you find this, now this is going to help you find this. After finding this, now you only consider this part so that you can relate it to this part. That's how you move. If you already understood, just pause the video and continue and see if you can find EG over EA. But if you can't, just follow the video through. So let's see now. I'm going to start by saying, and this is, this is important. I'm not, going to, um, I'm not going to flow with X or Y. Remember, if this part is in X's and this part is in Y's, I have to relate my X's with Y's so that X can be, can be substituted by Y or Y can be substituted by X. But you'll see, right? I will explain this after I've done it. So I'm going to say in my triangle, so this is now what I'm going to present. 
I'm going to write this. This is okay. What you're going to write in the exam is this part, right? And then you're going to write this part, right? Then you move to the next part. These PLTs, you don't need to write them. Clear. So you're going to say, I'm writing that first part, the second part, the third part, and then you're going to write this one. You're going to be like, therefore, remember, C E over E B is equal to, it's equal to what? In this PLT here, C E over E B is equal to C D over D F. Do we agree? Right? So I'm going to say exactly that. I'm going to say it's equal to C D over D F, which is basically 1 over 2, which is in X. And my resin is going to be what? My resin is going to be pa uh, uh, the, the first theory. Line parallel to one side of triangle that's my resin right then i move to the next step my next step is i'm gonna write it on the diagram on your question paper i'm gonna be like which means here i have one x and i also have two x here you can see that my whole cf is three y so if my whole cf is three y i want my df to be in terms of y so that if this can be in terms of y this already can be in terms of y since i know that this whole thing minus this 3y can give me this part i will be able to move to ga clear so that's exactly what i'm gunning for so i'm gonna be like how do i remove my x so that i can have a y i will say this is basically a two parts of a line we know that when you add them they give you the whole line so the first part is what is x which is cd the second part is 2x which is df and they all give you the whole cf so i, I mean x plus 2x should give me 3y then i will find how x and y relate so when you start you're gonna say you're gonna say what you're gonna say okay i see mr say where you're going with this you're gonna say cd plus df should give me cf right and then I know my CD is X plus my DF is 2X is equal to my CF will be 3Y. So X plus 2X algebra, come on, it's going to be 3X. And then I have equal to 3Y. When I divide both sides by 3, I'm going to be left with X is equal to Y. So now we know, oh, where I see X, I can substitute by Y. And where I see Y, I can substitute by X. But I need Y because fa can only be represented by y so which means fd should also be represented by y and if that's the case where i see 2x i'm gonna substitute by 2y so it means my df is also 2y where i saw x i substituted by y clear that's very important one variable will be absorbed by the other eventually clear now that i have my df i need my uh, my, my, my D A. Why do I need D A? Because it relates with E A. Where do I, where did I, where did I get my E A? I got my E A from the question. Clear. So you always look at the question, right? So I'm gonna be like, how do I get my D A? My D A should be my two Y plus my F A. Man, what is my F A in the sense? I will be like, if C F the whole C F is three Y. And the whole CA is 8Y. Then I know this part should be 5Y. Do we agree? Because 3 plus 5 is 8. Remember, if this part was 3, this part had to be 5. So that 3 plus 5 can be 8. Clear? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be like my DA is equal to DF plus FA. Right? I already know what my DF is. It's 2Y. Plus, what's my FA? I know that my FA is CA minus CF, which is 8Y minus 3Y. So I'm going to write that. I'm going to say it's going to be 8Y minus 3Y. So which is going to be what? 8Y minus 3Y is 5Y. 2Y plus 5Y is 7Y. This is my 7. I'm sorry. It looks very cute and cool, right? Now that I have my DA, I'll go now and say EG over EA should be what? Should be equal to DF 
over DA. I already have my DA and I know that my DF is 2i. So let's write the ratio. I'm going to be like, therefore, let me erase this first because I don't want it to be too, too messy, you know. We are going Ronaldo here. We don't want it to be too messy. So we're going to say EG over EA is equal to EG is in alignment with DF over and EA is in alignment with DA. Right? But we also know that DF is what? DF is 2Y over and then DA is what? 7y. So the y's can cancel and you can say therefore d a uh, e g uh, over e a is equal to what? When you cancel the y's you are left with 2 over 7. And remember the reason here, the reason here will be what? Line parallel to one side 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 sorry of triangle. Remember the reason. It's the first theorem in grade 12. So the final answer is exactly this one. Remember, they want the value of this ratio. This is the value, which means you are done. This is easy, right? So watch this video at least twice to understand the flow. Once you get the flow, then it's a wrap. <laughs> flow, wrap. Ah, come on, guys. Anyway, the most important thing about this is that you have to be... You have to have the spirit of Ubuntu and subscribe. What does subscribe do? It makes this video to go to other people who might need it, especially if you share it as well, automatically or manually. But you must also like so that the algorithm can tell YouTube and say, man, these students like this video. So send it to more students so that they can pass and understand it and, and pass like you and comment and tell me what you think and what you'd like me to do next and, 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 and end. Otherwise, guys, happy 2025.